What's going on, you guys? This one has been a long time coming. Today is the Recaro pole position seat install. Okay, hold on. There is one other thing. I was recently looking at the data for the channel and it showed that over 81% of our channel's viewers are not yet subscribed. If you're enjoying these videos that you're seeing and you want to support the channel, think about hitting that subscribe button and hit the notification bell if you want to be notified when the latest video drops. Much appreciated. Before we get going, I wanted to remind you guys, in today's video, there are going to be some hidden instructions how you can win these G paddles for the Mercedes that they apply to, basically. Uh, anyone who has the button steering wheel paddles. It's the first official giveaway of the channel, so stay tuned. I'll see you guys here shortly. So first off, let's go over everything that's going to be involved in this video. So we got our two pole positions. Now you'll notice obviously there are two different styles. One of them is the uh, kind of cloth material um, with the cloth inserts. This one used to be, which I will overlay now in the video, used to be a gray leather. I uh, used uh, Angelus leather paint to paint this one black, same way I did my steering wheel. And then I thought I was using the matte, um, basically water repellent on top, but it actually was the regular one. So that's why it looks fairly glossy right now. Now that does diminish over time, especially when people are sitting in it and et cetera, it'll kind of fade and lose its luster a little bit so it won't be so shiny. Um, but it turned out really well. It still stays really soft. And this stuff is super durable. If you're at all familiar with like the sneakerhead community, you know, Angelus is the go-to for any type of like leather sneaker reconditioning or anything like that. Um, and then for the cushions, now these on the other hand, were a pain in the butt. I tried like three different leather dyes on this, uh, or suede dyes specifically. And then I realized this isn't even suede, it's Alcantara. Um, so I don't know if it would have made much of a difference anyways, but the last one I use, I'll pop up on screen, it's Tulip Fabric Spray, and that stuff worked like a charm. I wish if I just used that from the beginning, they would still be nice and soft. But right now, I mean, they're still pliable, but it's not as soft to touch uh, like it would be if they were, you know, just Alcantara without having been dyed. Uh, hopefully after, you know, same thing, these kind of get sat in, they will kind of get the, the fibers back up, the hairs will pop back up and they'll be a little softer. But as far as what they are, uh, it's gonna work fine, it's gonna function fine. The leather one's gonna go on the passenger side and this one is gonna go on the driver's side. My thought process being for that is, uh, you know, kind of keep leather throughout that side of the car and then have the driver's seat as something kind of unique. Um, so that's why I wanted to do that. And also because I plan on eventually probably putting the same cloth cover on this one as well. I just figured, you know, why spend the extra money to do that at this point? I just want to get them in there. Um, and then later on, if I want to change out the covers, I can always do so. Moving on, you can see one of them already has the brackets on it. Um, and I need to touch up this hardware. I got a little tasty from sitting outside in the weather um, at one point before I owned them. Um, big shout out to Dimitri, by the way, for hooking these up. Um, these were his previous seats. These were in his CLK 320 before he decided to sell it. So yeah, he knew I was looking for a pair. He was getting rid of his, so he gave me a true friend deal on that. So I really appreciate it. Again, big shout out to Dimitri. Um, so this one already has the steel brackets on it. There's another set of steel brackets inside of the box here. And then he also had a set of aluminum brackets that he was planning to put for both because they're a lot lighter than the steels. Um, I don't know which ones I'll end up using. Um, if I do, I'll probably put these on the driver's side just to save a little bit of weight um, over here. And then here's all the hardware, by the way, too. We'll get into that extra seat buckle just in case. Um, these are the planted brackets and you can see part numbers for these right here. Um, this is the driver's side with the Recaro uh, slider already on it. And I believe he said he got this from a Porsche, if I'm not mistaken. Um, so yeah, he kind of pieced these together, um, but these are the ones that are meant for our chassis. And then the one other thing that we're gonna be using is a uh, seat occupancy emula emulator for the passenger side. This will keep your SRS late from coming on um, and it'll keep your airbag active. So no matter what, you know, um, you don't have to chance it. 
if somebody is in the passenger seat, um, it'll just kind of be automatically on. And I'd rather have it that way than to not have one if somebody is in the passenger seat. So yeah, just safety first. Uh, some guys use resistors that match the resistance of the wires. Um, but I figured, you know, might as well try this out. And this company was really awesome, by the way, uh, KDL. I'll link their uh, eBay page and pop them up on screen. Customer service was top notch. I'd, I'd message them like, hey, what do I need for a C55? Because um, there's a lot of differences actually, depending on what year, W203. For the C55, there was a Euro model, American model. So um, there was differences that could have been had. So I was almost gonna order the wrong one, but they guided me to this one, which they actually were only selling on uh, eBay and Australia. So they made a special listing to for me to be able to purchase it and they shipped it from poland uh in like three or four days so yeah shout out to them uh and then last but not least i just have some hood struts mine finally gave out after 15 years so if you need them there they are this is a stabilis 926850 and for the uh service one with the locking button 3477XW. So this will be the driver's side, and then this is the one you basically screw out from the base and just plug it in for the passenger side. So yeah, check these out. I got these off Pelican Parts. They were like $14 and $17. So not a bad deal. Much cheaper than anywhere else I found online, and Pelican shipped them out really fast. All right, so as far as getting in here and what you need to do, um, there's going to be bolts in the front. Obviously, you don't mind the wiring that's still sticking out from the uh, trans controller. I never tucked it back in. I will do that today, probably. Uh, so there's bolts up in the front. I believe they're Torx. And you need to unplug everything. Uh, and then same thing for the back. There's bolts in the back on each side. And then you also need to take uh, this cover off. And there's a Torx bolt for the seat belt holder. Um, I get, I'm going to find things out as I go because I've never done this before. So um, I will update you guys as we go. The one thing I do know is I'm going to need to keep one of these modules in here. I need to figure out which one it is. Um, the seat control module, not because I'm going to be using power seats, but because that is tied in with the telescoping steering wheel. Um, if you don't have electric um, telescoping wheel, you don't need to worry about this. But because I do, I want to be able to keep that functionality. Um, I'm going to keep this whichever one it is. I don't know which one it is yet, but I'm going to keep the module plugged in that controls the seat controls. All right, so the two bolts are out in the back. They are E12, the inverted Torx bolts. So there they are. And here are the ones from the front. Don't mind the mess. Same thing, E12s, both sides. All right, and before we go any further, after you get both those bolts out, definitely want to start unplugging all these down here. So uh, looks like most of them are just press in. Uh, so this one's got a tab on it. Just press it in and then pull out. Looks like they all have a similar, similar situation. They might be a bit stuck because they've been in here for a long time. But there they go. And let's see. I might have to fiddle with these. Make sure I don't break anything. So I'll be back. See you in a second. The last two, um, this is just a press down as well. Just like that, pull it out. And then this looks like it's one little piece, but it's actually the whole thing on the outside. So you gotta press on both sides, pull it out. All right, so now all of those are unplugged. The seat, I think, the sides are um seat belt over here is unplugged which now that i'm realizing <laughs> i might have to plug those back in so i can move it up forward to get to the seat belt so i'll be back in one second which ones control the motor function now it's this module on this side so this is the one i'm probably gonna have to keep the other one i'm guessing um is i don't know maybe seat belt and the heating controls not entirely sure you'll have to do some research online. So at least I got access now though. Just pop this clip off. So 
There we go. And right there is a, looks like a T-Torx, maybe like a T-45. We'll see. All right, picking up here. So the uh, bolt in here was actually a T-45. So I used just like this because it wouldn't fit in there with an actual ratchet on it. So I just put an eight millimeter wrench around the uh, head of this and it's not on there tight at all actually. So I, I put an extra wrench on this to get leverage and then it ended up just breaking loose super easy. So could probably get it off with just this. I'll try it on the passenger side. Next steps, um, since we know this is the module we want, uh, we'll take that out once we get out of here, but the seat is home free pretty much. All of the rest of the wiring is attached to the seat, actually. it's not. There's nothing else left. This is the only wiring loom that's uh, actually in the car. So um, now I just gotta snake this seat out of here. So I'll give you guys a little time lapse of how I get this out. driver's seat is out here's what it looks like inside of here pretty messy as expected a couple coins more funds for the channel um, besides that just got to do some vacuuming and then we will start playing around seeing how these brackets line up and where everything goes all right moment of truth does the telescoping steering wheel still work just took this out of the seat and plugged it in yes all right still got that so we definitely need that so that's good took this module off um the way you get it off is basically there's just some plastic prongs there's one you gotta undo on this side one you gotta do on this side and then i just snipped off um, a little piece of the rails that were on the side and it came out super easy so here's the partner referred if anybody's curious Daimler chrysler you know the era of mercedes we're in so we'll probably anchor this down somewhere underneath here once we've got a good spot for it. All right, so the test fit for the brackets, holes all line up good. And uh, now I'm gonna get in here and clean up before I start putting everything down. Might as well take the time to vacuum everything out, get everything situated. All right, got it all cleaned up. Not perfect, but it'll do the job. Um, got all the big debris out. My carpet honestly needs a Good scrubbing because you can see this side is basically hidden when you have the actual driver seat in here. So, uh, yeah, if I had the right carpet cleaner with me right now, I would do so. But for now, I'm going to have to leave it because, oh, well. <laughs> but anyways, the rest of it's clean. And I'm going to go ahead and start lining up that bracket and anchoring it down. I also need to see about the seat belt situation. Um on the inner side over here so i need to get this off so this can go to um, the recaro and i'm assuming there's a wire here for the seatbelt sensor hopefully i'll be able to snake that out i can see it kind of going through there so i'll be able to snake that out and keep plugged in so i don't get my seatbelt uh, chime going all the time um, so yeah here we go all right so i got the seatbelt off there is a 70 millimeter nut that goes onto this stud here that keeps it on. Uh, and besides that, there is a little screw that goes in here. I place it somewhere, I don't know. And then the plastic part on the back, you just uh, clip in that side and it'll pull up and then you just pull out like that. So now we got this solved. We'll be able to plug this in so our seatbelt light is not going wacko. And let's keep this job going. All right, guys, we have some successes, but uh, not all the way. As you can tell over here, <laughs> uh, no passenger seating right now because the driver's side seat. Yeah, driver's side seat was a pain in the butt. It is installed, it's finally there, um, but we got some more work to do, so I'll have to pick the video up in a few days from now. So see you guys soon. Uh, we had the seat in perfectly. Uh, we took it out because I had to add on these uh, This extension bracket we're gonna put them on both sides 
this makes it easier to get to the seatbelt. It was a nightmare trying to get the seatbelt in between this and the center console. So obviously they're kind of designed for four point harnesses. Um, and then the other thing we did is we changed out. I went and got some hardware just to make it easier to get in there with um, wrenches. So I got bolts. These are 7 16 by uh, something, 14 or something. Um, the ones that were in there were 7 16 by 20, which is weird. That's the only standard bolt I've ever found in this car. And they were on both sides for the seat belts. Um, so everything mounted up fine. Uh, depending on what seats you have, obviously your, your brackets and your hardware is all gonna be different. So I won't talk too much about that. And then the other thing we're gonna have to do is the aluminum brackets, aluminum Ricardo brackets that I use on the driver's side, they do not have this um, lip on them. And the planter brackets don't have space for that lip to go. So right now we're gonna cut, basically, we're gonna cut these off uh, on both sides. Shouldn't cause any type of structural um, issue, but these are probably designed to go with, I don't know, a certain slot, so. Yeah. All right, got these things tripped off over here, so it's all flat in the bottom. And then two of the holes lined up on the planter bracket, but the front one didn't, so we're just gonna drill those real quick. <clears throat> and then uh, the other seat is in. So there it is with the seatbelt extension. Way easier to get to. Before it was like way tucked down here, probably by about three or four inches. And it was impossible to, I literally had to like flip the seatbelt the opposite way to even get it to click in. Uh, and then here, down here, hold on. Down here is where we attached the actual harness to the mount or to the planted bracket rather. And then if you look, there's the extension we added on that metal bar. Um, yeah, fits in well. I was debating whether or not I wanted to go up one more of these to get the seat a little more uh, positive rake, but uh, I'll stick with it for now. If I if I feel like I need to uh, put it back up one, then I can always take it out. It's pretty pretty simple to get out. Um, adjusting these is kind of a pain in the butt because there's a like two washers on the inside that move around when you're trying to realign the holes, but uh, for now, it's good. All right, and just like that, the Recaro seat install is complete. Got the mismatching buddies, but uh, they look good together. So my thought process, like you guys know, is to kind of match the leather throughout kind of the L shape of the car with the back seats and the front passenger and have the driver's seat be something unique. Uh, so yeah, I think mission accomplished for now. I will end this video with uh, some good shots during the daylight so you can actually see how everything looks. I work till dark again, so yeah, not the best lighting in here right now, but you guys are getting a preview of what you'll see here in a flash. All right, as promised, here's some daytime shots. So here's from outside of the car in the back. Here's from inside of the car in the back. Don't mind the back of this one is pretty dirty. I still need to take a plastic razor blade and scrape all of the extra paint off from when I was painting it. Comes off of my fingernails, but it takes too long. So I'll get a little plastic razor blade and get that off. Now let's move on to the front. All right, and here it is from the front of the car. See, see my breath showing up, <laughs> it's cold outside. But there it is. Looks super clean, not really noticeable um, when you're just looking from outside of the car unless you're kind of paying attention. Um, but a nice, clean, simple upgrade that makes the driving experience uh, very nice. Uh, another Awesome upgrade to the car that I'm super happy with. Driving experience wise, they feel really good. Uh, good bolstering, uh, especially like 
in the mid area on the torso and still comfortable. They're wide enough. Like I said, the pole positions only come in one size. They're kind of built for a bigger frame. So I'm a pretty tall guy, I guess. I'm around 6'2", 6'3", around 180, 85 pounds. Um, so they work good for me. They fit comfortable, uh, still hold me in really secure. And they probably dropped around, I don't know, anywhere from 40 to 50 pounds per seat compared to the stock seats. The stock seats weren't as heavy as what I've been hearing online. They're probably about 70 pounds if I had to guess. Um, maybe less than that. Uh, what was rumored online was somewhere around 90 pounds per piece. So I don't know, maybe maybe people haven't been hitting the weights. They thought it was a little, uh, <laughs> a little heavier than it actually was, but no, all jokes aside. Um, they seem to be around 70 pounds or so, maybe a little less. Uh, so yeah, weight wise, excellent upgrade. Driving experience wise, excellent upgrade. And just overall look of the car, I feel like they look pretty dope. They fit the car well, they fit the whole build well. Um, I feel like with the shifter, the stereo delete, everything else that's going on in the car and the way the car is built right now, all of these things cohesively coming together, it's turning this car into a whole new thing. And it's really fun um, to just, I don't know, every every few mods you feel like, man, this car is like really changing. And it's it's cool to see the progression and the transformation of this car as it goes. So 2021 has a lot more in store for it. And 2020 is not done yet. We still got more to do. So that being said, hope you guys enjoyed. If you missed the G Paddle giveaway, it's hidden somewhere in the video. So go back and try to find it and uh, look forward to seeing who is the first winner on the first official giveaway for the channel. So thank you guys as always. Don't forget to subscribe and I will see you guys on the next one. Peace.